So to quote the words of a famous song, if you liked it, you should have put a wing on it. So we're going to talk about wings and spoilers. We're going to look at the differences between wings and spoilers, how they work. We're also going to look at vortex generators and the benefits that they offer. And we're going to bust a few myths that people have or just misunderstandings about spoilers and aerodynamics in general. In this video, we're going to talk about aerodynamics of a car and whether a car needs a spoiler or not. You see a lot of hot hatches and tuned cars around with great big scaffold on the back with a wing on it. But does it actually work? What are the benefits of it? What's the theory behind aerodynamics? Now, we're not going to go into this subject in great detail. So if you want to go into more detail, that information's out there. Our aim here is just to inform people so they can understand the basic concepts involved and come up with a good package of aerodynamic enhancements for your car. So spoilers and wings. Wings give you a downforce. They're mounted much higher up on the car, usually on some form of scaffold. Um, it's basically an upside down airplane wing and it's used to create inverse lift. So instead of with an aeroplane, you want lift to raise it up. In a car, you want it to be pushed down. So we're gonna talk briefly about aeroplane wings and lift. You'll notice an aeroplane wing has a larger surface area on the top and a flatter surface area underneath. And as the air moves over the top, it's traveling faster and faster air creates lift. We just do a, a little experiment to illustrate this. So we can demonstrate this effect with two sheets of paper. If you blow between the two sheets of paper, see what happens, they move together. That fast moving stream of air is creating a region of low pressure and forcing those sheets of paper together. And that's exactly how an airplane wing works. It splits the air up into a fast moving stream that has to go over a large surface area and a short surface area. And that large surface area is on the top of an airplane wing and it gives you lift. So in a car, you'd want that inverted. So it's giving you downforce. Now spoilers tend to be on the trailing edge of the roof or the last part of the car. Now the aim of a spoiler is just to spoil the airflow. We have the Coinda effect. So the flow of air around an object is very much like water. Just illustrating it with a tap and a glass, you can see how the water is wanting to follow and continue on a path around the glass. In fact, the water practically goes up the other side of this glass. And the same thing's happening with our cars. The airflow is trying to hug the surface of the car. And at the trailing edge, we start to get drag. So as a car pushes itself through a stream of air, you have a big pressure front at the front of the car. Imagine you're walking through water and it takes a lot of effort to get going and the water has to push around you. Air is exactly the same. The faster you go, the harder the car has to work to push through the air. And the faster you go, the bigger the effect of aerodynamics are on the car. Generally speaking, there are a few exceptions, um, but we won't go into them. So thinking about the way the air flows over the car itself, your car is actually shaped much like an airplane wing. The path it takes over the top of the car is much longer than under the car, so it creates lift. The faster your car goes, the lighter it is, the higher it's sitting on the suspension. So at significant speeds, it can, in a lot of cases, adversely affect the handling of the car. So with aerodynamic enhancements, it can address that. You don't usually get very much in terms of downforce. A fairly large rear wing on a car will give you about 30 kilograms of downforce. Um, but that 30 kilograms is useful, is counteracting the amount of lift that the car is having and restoring some of the lost handling characteristics that you have at low speeds. So as the air travels over the car, you have the boundary layer where this fast moving, low pressure stream of air creates a void underneath it. The air underneath it on the car can actually flow in all sorts of turbulent directions. You're creating turbulence and drag. 
So you really want to keep the boundary layer as close to the car as possible. And this is where Vortex generators come in. You've probably seen them. The Mitsubishi Evo is the most popular car out there with Vortex generators on. Um, we won't discuss the merits and benefits of the specific design. The Vortex generators on a Mitsubishi Evo, uh, mainly for cosmetic reasons with a little bit of aerodynamic enhancement. If you were specifically designing a Vortex generator for a car, it wouldn't look as pretty as that, but it would be a lot more effective. So the idea of these Vortex generators is to create little vortexes in the air to break up that boundary layer and keep the airflow through the car. So your wing at the back needs airflow underneath it. So we said that fast moving air creates an area of low pressure and you want that beneath the wing so it pulls the car down onto the road. If the air is just going over the top of the wing, you're just creating more lift and in a lot of cases, a lot more turbulence. So you'll notice that a wing, as well as generating a lot of downforce, increases drag. You can tune the wing to a certain extent and get the maximum benefit of downforce and minimize the amount of drag it creates. Generally, in pretty much every case, you will create a lot more drag when you fit a wing. So you've got to weigh up the benefits as to whether you want more cornering grip and better handling and road holding or whether those top speeds and the lack of drag is more beneficial in which case you would dispense completely with the wing. So the formula is the drag coefficient is quite complex to actually um, get that drag coefficient figure so it's calculated by lots of different aspects of the car. It's often quoted by car makers. It's quite important um, for car makers to have a low drag coefficient or a low CD. Um, a Volvo V50, a Mark V Golf GTI has a CD of about 0.32. Um, a 1979 Ford Mustang measures about 0.44 and the typical F1 car clocks in at 0.7 to 1.1. Most modern cars are around 0.24 to 0.3 and the low drag coefficient means that the car will be more economical to drive and will have to work less hard to maintain high speeds. So the faster the car goes, the higher the amount of drag. Velocity is very much part of this equation. So interestingly with F1 cars, the drag coefficient is much higher than it is on a lot of popular road cars. So with F1 cars, you're dealing with really high speeds but you need as much downforce as possible. Um, they're cornering at very high speeds, so the car has to be pushed down onto the road. So when you're designing an F1 car, aerodynamics is vitally important and can make a significant difference. And the downforce generated by an F1 car is sufficient that it could, it could drive upside down on the roof of a tunnel with the downforce it's creating, pushing the car into the, the tunnel roof. The, the challenge is actually getting the car into that position. So I'd certainly like to see that done. I'm sure someone out there has probably managed it. Um, but in theory, looking at all the stats and downforce generated and weights of the car and the speeds they're traveling at, it's certainly possible for that to happen. We're not gonna go into detail on front splitters and underbody spoilers and diffusers at the rear. Um, that's going to be dealt with in another video. Um, but just thinking about your general car, you won't see much benefit from a spoiler in everyday driving. It will improve your fuel economy at highway speeds. It will reduce the drag on the car, so there is a benefit. Manufacturers fit them. Um, in some cases on cars, the spoilers pop up at a certain speed, generally about 50 or 60 miles an hour. So you get the benefits of a nice sleek looking car and then the spoiler actually comes into place when it's actually needed and gives you a little bit of benefit and helps to spoil that airflow coming over the car. In terms of wings though on road cars, I wouldn't really recommend fitting a wing. You're not gonna get very much downforce at general driving speeds. It looks cool in the eyes of many people, so I would certainly respect that. For me, I wouldn't worry about adding a wing. If I was driving at speeds of between 70 and 100 miles an hour, say regular track work and that sort of thing, there's an argument there for actually getting a wing fitted to your car. And in some cases of cars where the design creates an awful lot of lift, you'd argue that a wing would be beneficial on those cars to actually keep them on the road. 
So what are our thoughts about Vortex generators, spoilers and wings on everyday cars? Well, it's very hard to actually give a very specific answer because cars come in so many different shapes and size and the aerodynamic flow over the car will to a large degree determine on which option would be best for you. Um, in most cases, we see benefits from vortex generators along the trailing edge of the roof line. Um, that reduces drag, it can help your fuel economy, and if you've got anything like a spoiler or a wing further back, it can encourage the airflow towards those and maximise the benefits you get from them. Um, spoilers also reduce the drag, so on quite a few cars it makes sense to have a spoiler fitted just to keep the air flowing over the back of the car and avoid that drag that you would otherwise get. When it comes to wings though, they give you a lot of downforce, so you get extra grip and better cornering, but they usually and in most cases create extra drag, so that ruins your fuel economy and effectively slows the car up. Plus, with all of these things, you're adding weight to the car, and weight is a big drawback when it comes to performance. You want your car to be as light as possible. So you do need to be traveling at reasonable speeds to get the benefits from these wings and spoilers. And in most cases, you won't generally notice it in everyday driving. If you're doing a lot of track work or a lot of very fast driving and cornering grip is important, then you can certainly move wings up your priority list. We hope this video has given a good overview on spoilers and wings and vortex generators and it's helped you to understand a little bit more about aerodynamics and hopefully we've blown a few of those common misconceptions and misunderstandings about aerodynamics out of the water so that you can approach it with a, a good eye and have a reasonable knowledge as to what you're getting into. Um, check up on our site, we've got some articles on aerofoils, spoilers, wings and various aerodynamic enhancements of a car, along with all the other tuning stuff that we do. We're always updating those articles, so keep checking back. I spend a lot of time just researching different topics and going over what we've already got, just to make sure that we're always publishing the cutting edge. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. You won't miss out on future content that we release. And remember to stay tuned.